Hey guys, this is Dr. Asmat and welcome back to my channel Easy Dental by Dr. Asmat. So today's topic is going to be ledge in root canal treatment and how to manage it. Okay, so do you know what is an iatrogenic event? Basically, it is a procedure which is induced inadvertently by a physician or a surgeon. Okay, now this ledge thing which we are going to discuss, it is not initially present within the root canal. Okay, no. This ledge it is in a procedure or it is a mishappening you can say that is produced by the dentist okay you must have seen that when you are doing your root canal treatment sometimes the instruments it is going to the uh, correct working length but later on you see that after two three files your file is not advancing to its full working length so the cause of this could be ledge formation or it can be due to canal blockage by foreign objects foreign objects like any restorative materials because of your uh, separated instruments or files because of the cotton pellets paper points or uh, if there is any remnant of calcium hydroxide dressings or packed dentinal chips or tissue debris now what is a ledge? So the glossary of endodontic terms of the American Association of Endodontists, they have defined that ledge is an artificial irregularity which is created on the surface of the root canal wall that impedes the placement of an instrument to the apex of an otherwise patent canal. What does it mean? that? your canal it was initially it was patent okay but now you have created an artificial path that you file it's now it's not going to till the correct apex okay see in this figure you can see that your file it is going straight it is deviated from its original path the original path was like this the canal was like this but now because of your uh, because of the doctor's fault what has been done that your file it has now created an artificial path and it has deviated from the original path so now your file it is not reaching till the apex okay see the in this this thing this is the patent canal main canal but this is an artificially created canal which is deviated from the original canal right okay now ledging of curved canal it is a common instrumentation error and usually this ledge it is present on the outer side of the curvature why because of the exaggerated cutting and careless manipulation during root canal instrumentation now ledge it can be formed within the original canal path okay it can be formed within the original canal path why it happens if you are skipping your instrument sizes okay you are using number 10 then after that you are using directly you are using number 20 you're not using number 15 okay so if you are skipping your instrument size then ledge it will uh, it will be present in the original canal path and another thing is that ledge can create a false canal or an another canal okay because of the misdirection of files so two things are there ledge can be seen within the original canal path or ledge can create a false canal also now what are the factors which are implicated in ledge formation so first thing is the location of the tooth usually in molars you will see that ledge is more common and among the molars also you'll see if you're talking about mandibular molars you can see that ledge is more common in the mesiobuccal canals why because that canal is very narrow and most in most of the cases it is curved so first thing is tooth location second thing is canal curvature then instrument design what type of instrument you're using because stainless steel instruments they have greater chances of ledge formation than nitai instruments then it depends on the alloy properties about uh, it depends on the instrumentation techniques and operator experience so curvature of the root canal it is the most significant variable which affects the incidence of ledge formation it has been seen that canals which is having a curvature of less than 10 degree according to uh, Schneider's scale they were rarely ledged okay but the canals which was having a curvature of more than 20 degree they were ledged over 56 percent of the time so more the curvature more is the chances of ledge formation 
and it also depends on the canal location so the mesiobuccal and the mesiolingual canals were more frequently ledged than the distal lingual or distobuccal canals because these canals they uh, it also it depends on the location and also it depends on the curvature so these canals they are more curved and very narrow now what are the causes of ledge formation so it can be due to incorrect or insufficient access cavity preparation because if your access cavity is not uh, having a straight line path then it will not allow adequate uh, instrumentation okay it will always provide an obstructed access so what we need is an unobstructed access to the apical constriction so first thing is inadequate access cavity preparation second thing is incorrect assessment of the root canal direction okay you don't have proper knowledge where your canal would be third thing is incorrect working length determination then forcing or driving the instrument into the canal never do this do not force your instrument okay keep uh, your hand very smooth and very soft do not force your instrument within the canal the next thing is use of non pre curved stainless steel instruments in curved root canal so always if you are uh, doing your root canal treatment and in the initial radiograph if you are seeing that the canal is curved always pre curve your smaller k files then the next thing is failure to use the instruments in a sequential order that is skipping the instrument sizes then inadequate irrigation or lubrication during instrumentation then over relying on chelating agents then attempting to prepare the calcified root canals and applying too much pressure if you are not able to negotiate the canals okay so this can lead to ledge formation next thing is an attempt to retrieve or bypass a fractured instrument in that case also there is a probability of uh, ledge formation then removing the root canal filling materials during the endodontic retreatment procedures so all these uh, all these factors can lead to ledge formation now how to recognize a ledge suppose you have made a ledge and you don't know how that it is actually a ledge so what what are the ways in which we can recognize a ledge so first thing is canal is straightened at that point in this figure you can see canal is straightened at that point every time you are putting your file within the uh, canal it will hit okay it will hit here you will feel you will have the tactile sensation that no it's not going till the apex it is hitting somewhere so the canal is straightened where the ledge is there then suddenly the file no longer negotiates the curve but catches on a dead end so this is a dead end every time you are inserting your file it is hitting at one point and it's not going further then loss of normal tactile sensation of the tip of the instrument binding in the lumen of the canal if you have done a lot of root canal treatments you must have that tactile sensation in your hand and you can feel the apex okay you can feel yeah that your file is going till the apex and is not binding somewhere else okay so if ledge is there you will lo you will lose your normal tactile sensation then hitting a solid wall that is a loose feeling with no tactile sensation of tensional binding you will it will feel like you're hitting somewhere and it's not going further and there's a dead end so all these are the ways in which you can recognize that yeah you have made a ledge and next thing is the radiograph of the tooth with the instrument placed at the point of suspected ledge so it will provide additional information now how to manage a ledge so when a ledge is suspected root canal instrumentation should immediately be ceased and all the efforts should be concentrated on how to regain the access to the apex so you have to use your smaller k size files then a high quality radiograph is obtained with the instrument by which you have created the ledge so that you have to verify it where the ledge is and you can locate uh, reveal its uh, the radiograph it will reveal the location of the ledge okay then third thing is when a ledge is formed then the shortest file possible that can reach the working length should be selected to bypass the ledge okay initially you you felt that you have created the ledge now what you have to do stop everything and now your main focus is not on the root canal treatment but first you have to attempt to regain the access to the apex 
okay then you have to take your radiograph you have to determine the location where your ledge is then take the smallest k file suppose number 6k file or number 8k file and then you try to take that file till the working length okay you have to bypass the ledge then shorter instruments why we are saying that smaller k files because these shorter instruments they have more stiffness and they will allow the clinician's finger to be placed closer to the tip of the instrument and it will have a lot of tactile sensation okay so uh, if you're using your shorter instruments they will give more control then you have to do copious irrigation with sodium hypochlorite and that irrigant it should be uh, you can change it also you can use chelating agents like edta throughout the procedure you have to use copious amount of irrigation so it usually requires determination perseverance and patience to bypass a ledge once it is formed so this ledge bypassing is not an easy task and you have to dedicate your time so that you can bypass the ledge so it will require some patience okay now bypassing a ledge using hand instruments so first thing is how we can bypass the ledge using our smaller k files or the hand instruments like number six number eight number 10 15 k files okay then there are ledge removal instruments also which is uh, known as a micro explorer okay so this micro explorers also can be used then there's another ledge removal instrument which is having a diamond coating it is known as ELES okay so all these hand instruments they are used to bypass the ledge or they are used to eliminate the ledge and they will enlarge the orifice of the original canal so now how you have to do this first thing what you have to do is you have to pre enlarge the uh, canal which is coronal to the ledge so here this point is the ledge point Anna? now what you have to do this point the ledge wala point coronal to this point you have to enlarge the canal okay you have to remove any obstructions any curvature which is present coronal to the ledge okay so that you can improve your tactile sensation then first ledge is uh, probed with a pre-curved k file that is number uh, 8 or number 10 k file why because hand instruments they will provide a better tactile sensation okay so now in order to bypass the ledge and gain access to the apex the shortest instrument that can reach the level of the ledge should be used and it should be used in a watch winding and gentle picking motion of short amplitude to look for a catch okay initially aapko ye nahi karna ki initially aapne file dali and see the you will reach till the apex no it will never happen first you have to try to look for a catch kisi point pe aapko aapki file mein aapko catch mil raha hai ya nahi okay so you have to use your smaller k files first thing you have to pre-curve it okay then you have to use it in a watch winding motion and picking motion and also picking motion should be of shorter amplitude okay and you have to look for a catch then whenever you will feel any resistance to negotiation the file should be retracted slightly it should be rotated and then again it should be advanced so that that your pre-curve tip it now it will face in a different direction so by this procedure by this way you can look for a catch okay so now if this technique is unsuccessful then the clinician should flare the canal coronal to the ledge in an anti curvature direction so that you can obtain a wider straight line access to the original canal okay then you have to use number 10k file to bypass the ledge so small hand files which are dedicated to microscopic use such as micro opener which is having a tip size of 10 and 6 percent taper they they usually what they do is they help to flare the orifice of the original pathway beyond the ledge so these instruments they are always used uh, uh, with the dental operating microscope with magnification and illumination and other hand instruments are also available like micro explorer instrument is there dental cadder instrument ELES instrument so all these instruments what they'll do they are long enough to reach the ledge which is formed in the radicular third now the micro explorer it is used to explore the original canal and penetrate a narrow canal beyond the ledge and ELES it is also used to reduce the ledge as the tip portion it is coated with diamond so another method is 
using the ultrasonic tips first method is using hand instruments you are, you can bypass the ledge or you can use your ultrasonic tips now smaller diameter ultrasonic tips what they do is they improve the visibility and also they have a benefit of reducing the need for sacrificing sound dentine while bypassing the ledge okay but the only drawback to these thinner tips is that they are more prone to fracture so use of longer ultrasonic tips may also be facilitated in this procedure but it should only be done if it is performed under the microscope so these ultrasonic tips first you have to select an appropriate size of the ultrasonic tip smaller ultrasonic tips you have to use then you have to pre curve it in the direction of the original canal okay now you have to simply place it in the orifice of the original canal and then you have to activate your ultrasonic tips so what it will do it will automatically it will enlarge the opening of the initial canal so uh, by this way uh, your uh, the point coronal to the ledge it will be enlarged and now then you can use your smaller k files to bypass the ledge but remember that ultrasonics they should always be used on the lowest power setting so that you avoid overextending the ledge okay because the ultrasonics sometimes they get very aggressive in cutting and again it will create uh, create another path and your ledge bypassing will become difficult okay so first method was hand instruments another method is using the ultrasonic tips now if you're not able suppose if you're not able to bypass the ledge then what you have to do so if you are not able to bypass the ledge and your patient is asymptomatic he's not having any pain any any kind of symptom then what you have to do is you have to instrument your canal till the ledge point of the ledge and then you have to irrigate it well using copious amount of sodium hypochlorite and chlorhexidine okay why because sometimes what happens is your irrigants it may reach the apex it may penetrate beyond the ledge okay so if you're not able to bypass the ledge and your patient is also asymptomatic you have to keep your instrumentation till the ledge point only and you have to irrigate the canal well then you have to canal uh, you have to uh, give calcium hydroxide dressing for at least a week and then you can obturate your root canal okay so in these cases it is preferable to obturate the ledged canal with techniques like warm vertical compaction because warm gutta percha what will uh, what will happen it will flow and sometimes it may flow beyond the ledge and it will okay and it will create an apical seal there and also the patient is informed about the guarded prognosis of the treatment and possible future treatment options could be given to the patient like surgery or replantation or if the patient is having pain then you have to extract the tooth also so now you need to know what is the prognosis of these cases in which ledge has been formed so if your ledge has been bypassed so there is no effect on the prognosis your prognosis will be good only in cases where the ledge cannot be bypassed the prognosis is determined by preoperative status of the pulp and the presence of uh, presence and extent of periapical periodontitis okay initially when the patient came to you what was the condition of the pulp and how much periapical periodontitis was present so your prognosis will depend on this thing then distance between the ledge and the root apex and then third is size of the instrument that has instrumented the root canal up to the desired length before the ledge formation suppose uh your canal was already instrumented till size 40 so it has already cleaned the apex even after that if you have formed the ledge then there is a no big deal okay kyunki aapki prognosis will be good but initial file only if you are using like suppose number 10 number 15 and that file has created a ledge that means your canal is not clean yet so in that case the prognosis will be guarded okay so this allows an assessment of how clean the root canal may be before the formation of the ledge the if the canal was already cleaned and then you have formed the ledge then there is no problem but if your root canal was not cleaned properly and your uh, uh, ledge is formed using the initial instruments only then there is a chance of guarded prognosis now how can you prevent ledge formation 
first thing is accurate high quality diagnostic preoperative radiographs should be taken and they should be interpreted well before your start before the start of the treatment then awareness of the typical root canal morphology and its variation is very important for the clinic then adequate access cavity preparation should be done in order to eliminate all the obstructions which is present coronal to the apical constriction then you have to use pre-curved instruments you have to use copious amount of irrigation and always use your instruments in a sequential order without skipping any sizes and do not apply any external force frequent recapitulation should be performed and what is recapitulation it is the reintroduction of previously used instrument throughout the instrumentation procedure okay. then you can use modified tip files which is marketed as flex r files light speed k3 okay so these files they have a rounded tip so they will not cut into the wall but they will slip alongside the wall so there are lesser chances of ledge creation these flex R files, they were designed by Rohan in 1985 and it was the first, he was the first person to use a non-cutting tip to prevent the ledge formation in curved canals. Okay, so these flex R files, they can be used. Then other instruments can be C plus files. So these files, they have a stronger buckling resistance as compared to your uh, conventional K files. And these files, they allow easier location of the canal orifices and also easier access till the apical third of the canal. Okay, so these are all the ways by which you can prevent your ledge. We have studied how to, uh, how to recognize a ledge, how to manage a ledge, how to prevent ledge formation. So best thing is prevention is better than cure. We all have heard this. So always try not to create a ledge. Be slow throughout the procedure. Okay, do not force your instruments, be gentle and definitely you will be able to do the best root canal treatment without creation of a ledge. So that's it for today's video. So if you like my content, please like and please subscribe my channel. Okay, bye bye. Thank you.